You ever learn something that you're just like, man, I really wish I knew that when I started playing. Well, that's literally what this video is about. Those bits of information that are literally making the world of difference between you getting better at the game and you just walking around like a bot. My name is The King Live, and in the beta, I was placed in Iron 2, but by fighting through blood, sweat, and tears, I was able to make my way all the way up to Immortal, and I'm going to give you guys all of the things that I think are the most important things for Valorant players to know in the game. And some of these things are things that players just aren't going to tell you. And no, I don't mean they're secret tips that nobody's heard of, but what I mean is I've been making Valorant guide content for pretty much the last year, and guides pretty much just consistently tell you the same things. So let me try to give you things that you maybe don't hear all that often. The first thing being that aim isn't as important as you think. Don't get me wrong, having good aim can be a great asset, but people treat the game, especially when starting out, as if aim is the only important factor. When you're learning the game, you should focus on improving your raw aim, of course. This means doing aim trainers and deathmatch and actively trying to take duels in your matches. But there will be a point where your aim will be good enough, and that point will come sooner than you think. People miss shots. Rather than telling yourself your aim could have been better, try to ask yourself how could you have made the shots easier to hit. This sort of segues perfectly into the next tip, which is bad teammates can still be perfectly set up. Listen guys, your teammates might be terrible, but I've seen this in practice so many times from our smurf commentaries on our website, where we have a radiant level player matched up with bad teammates, and they are able to make these bad teammates look like exceptional players. And they do this by playing off of them and turning their mistakes into an advantage. Basically, the logic here is, if your teammate is going to do something stupid, you yourself can try to make that stupid play less stupid. I play a lot of Omen for example, so a way that I'll do that is if my teammate is going to wide swing somebody for no reason, I'll be there to blind that target when they actually take the fight. Or another way is if your teammate is just sitting alone in a one and done, try to bait for them, because if you don't, they're just going to get themselves killed. Furthermore, what this means is that if you communicate with your teammates clearly and correctly, you can generally, generally count on them to trade you. Trust me, I've practiced this with my friends who are literally brand new to the game, and if you tell them when you're going to swing and say swing with me, and then count it down, regardless of how good or bad they are as a player, they will generally be able to get a trade. Moving on to the third tip though, and that is that team play is what separates Radiance from Immortals. And obviously the comparison Radiance to Immortals isn't relevant to a lot of people watching this video, and that's not to throw any shade, everybody starts somewhere, but the thing you need to realize is that you can start working on your team play right now, whatever rank you are. Specifically, what I mean is that Radiant players are constantly aware of what their teammates are doing and how to play off of them. A great way to play off of your teammates as well is by comboing utility. For example, using an Omen Blind at the same time your Sova uses his Recon, or using a Raze Ultimate at the same time your Sky ults. There are a lot of different ways that you can combo utility, but these are things that you'll see pros do all of the time, because one ability alone is generally a lot easier to handle than two to three abilities being comboed together. If there's anything I've learned from Immortal level lobbies and analyzing pro plays, it's that Immortal players are still too much of solo players. Immortal players are really good at playing solo, but they don't really understand team play all that much and it holds them back. And that means it's probably holding you back in your rank too. The next tip is actually a little bit relative, but at least in my experience and what I've heard from pros, tens included, playing less is generally the secret to ranking up more. Now obviously there's a potential to rank up more by playing more, and the best way to get better at the game is by playing the game. But in my experience, the best way to rank up is to play just a few games a day and actually focus during them. Don't tilt, don't rage when you miss shots, and don't get upset with your teammates. Just play a few games and genuinely enjoy them. You'll play better, you'll notice you win more, and when you lose, you won't go on a loss streak because you'll quit playing. Obviously, the counterpart to this is queuing a lot, and hey, if you win every game doing this, yeah, obviously it will be faster, but that's not normally how it's going to go, and that's why if you're looking to climb, I suggest to play less. Tip number five has to deal with team comps, and that tip is it's absolutely necessary to have a controller on your team. I don't care if it's Viper, Omen, Brimstone, or Astra, you need to have a controller on your team, otherwise you're going to have a very rough time in the game. Personally, for me, the game's not even fun without a controller. There are just too many angles, and it's incredibly obnoxious to deal with. This isn't just my take, though. I've heard this from pro players like Fnatic Boaster as well. You can get away without a Sentinel. You can get away without an Initiator. But if your team doesn't have a controller, it's going to be a rough time, and you should save yourself the trouble and either dodge or lock a controller. And that's actually what brings us to our sixth tip, which is everything else doesn't matter. Hey, if you got a controller, don't lock Sentinel if you don't know how to play Sentinel. Don't lock Initiator if you don't know how to play Initiator. Listen, I'd rather have you lock an agent that you know how to play well, rather than locking an agent that you've never played before because it's good on a map. 
The only exception to this rule I might say is that Viper is pretty necessary on Breeze and Sage is pretty necessary on Icebox. You can obviously still win without them, but they are both very, very strong on those respective maps, and I do believe without them it does make the game quite a bit more difficult. But hey, if you don't know how to use those agents on those maps, not going to matter all that much. Remember, it's the utility that makes agents different, and if you don't know how to use their utility, they're useless. So don't pick an agent that you don't know how to play for the purpose of filling, unless it's controller. This next one is a bit more difficult to do, but what I've started to realize most recently is that when you're dealing with a team that likes to just full rush everything, the best way to deal with them is to set up crossfires and shoot them down when they're coming in. You will not, and I repeat, will not be able to deal with a 5-man rush solo when they are using utility and barreling down on site. You need your teammates to help you, and you need to position in a way where you and your teammates can play off of each other. Obviously, throwing down a molly to block the entrance gives your team more time to rotate, and this can be super helpful, but if you're setting up on a site in a way where you're going to be taking a 1v1 duel, you really want to avoid doing this. The way most site defenses work is you'll have one player in a position where they'll take first contact, and then you'll have another player who will peek off of their contact. But if instead you have one player who takes contact solo, and then they die, and then another player who takes contact solo, and then they die, like, what have you accomplished? Set up a crossfire instead with your teammates on site and stop setting up solo. Play off of your teammates and you'll get more kills and win more games. Moving on to tip number 8, the topic of crosshair placement is kind of memed up, but the reason it's memed up is because crosshair placement is basically the whole game. At the end of the day, if your crosshair placement was perfect like many players seem to believe theirs is, you'd win every single one of your 1v1 duels because all you would have to do is click. This is why it's so important to learn when you're starting out, but many lower ranked players kind of just shrug it off and go, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the reason we say it a lot is because it's a very large part of the game. That's why a lot of a job of a teacher is to find new interesting ways to teach a subject players maybe have already heard about. Because clearly the ways we're teaching it before didn't stick, but maybe this one will. If you're below the rank of Immortal, your crosshair placement probably sucks. Try to work on it a little bit. The ninth tip though is that baiting your teammates is really easy to do. And I don't mean a good type of baiting, I mean the bad type of baiting. Sometimes your headspace is just not in the place it should be, and you don't even realize you're baiting your teammates incredibly hard. Maybe you're sitting there inside of a smoke doing nothing, or maybe you're playing in a position far away when you could be pushing up to help them. Baiting your teammates is really easy to do accidentally, and it takes active attention not to do. Baiting isn't something that you just flip a switch and suddenly you're not doing it. Even the best players have times where their rounds play out and they're like, oh shoot, I accidentally baited the heck out of that guy. It happens, but by acknowledging that it happens, we can try to make it happen less. Always keep an eye on your map and try to think about how you can be helping your teammates during the round and it will reduce the amount that you accidentally bait them. Speaking of looking at the map though, let's talk about the opposite thing that has gotten us all killed far too much, and that is looking at the map at the worst time and getting killed because of this. One of the ways I've learned to avoid this is if you're holding an angle, rather than looking at the map, try asking your teammates what they're seeing. Hopefully if you're holding an angle, you can rely on callouts from your teammates just a little bit more, and that way you won't have to glance at the map all the time. Because theoretically, they all have the same information on their map that you do, right? So hopefully, if you ask people what they're seeing, they can say the same exact thing that you will see. This obviously isn't going to always work because sometimes people just won't talk, but in that case, it might be best just to give up the angle and look at the map and then re-peek afterwards to save yourself the risk. This next tip is something that's a bit more obvious, but still so many players have a bad habit of this, and that is pushing smokes that they really shouldn't be pushing. We've all been there where we're pushing a smoke thinking, I really shouldn't be pushing this. Like I said, so many players have this bad habit of needing to push every single smoke that they see, and just waiting a little bit for the smoke to dissipate can oftentimes be so much better. You don't need to push every single smoke that you see. It's okay to let a smoke exist and hold it. And what you'll find is, like I said, many players have this bad habit, so if you hold a smoke, oftentimes players will push them, and you'll pick up a free kill because of this. Like I said though, there are some times when pushing a smoke is okay, but start thinking about the situation situations where you don't have to a little bit more, and you'll probably save yourself a number of times. Tip number 12 takes us to probably one of the biggest things I wish I knew, which is communication is one of the harder skills to improve in Valorant. I think this one literally just revolves around getting people out of their comfort zone. So many gamers are incredibly introverted, and trying to get people to communicate effectively in-game can be really hard. That being said, that's why it's so valuable if you can get people who actually know how to communicate well on a team. I wish when I started out in Valorant, I practiced making callouts just a little bit more, and actively communicated what my intentions were within the round, because it would have helped me improve a lot faster. This is something I still struggle with today, and it's because communication is very hard, and for many players, it's the thing holding them back. 
Tip number 13 is another problem that most players have though, which is they probably use counter strafing wrong. Lots of people know what counter strafing is, but they don't actively use it within their matches. Instead, what they do is they go, yeah, yeah, counter strafing. And then every time they take an engagement, they will full crouch in the open and get themselves killed. Listen, if you're going to be taking a prolonged engagement in the open, or you're fighting multiple enemies at the same time, you need to be counter strafing between your shots. Otherwise, you're going to get traded out, or worse, killed before you can even get one. Counter strafing doesn't actually make you accurate faster in Valorant, so the point of counter strafing isn't to hit your shots faster, the point of it is to make yourself more difficult to hit. Tip number 14 takes us into something that many players, especially in low elo, struggle with though, and that is relying too much on gimmicks. What is a gimmick though? Well, those are things like wombo combo killjoy setups, cypher setups, sage wall boost, aggressive omen plays, double shock dart lineups, stuff like that. And listen, gimmicks can be really cool. But what you need to understand though is that they're gimmicks for a reason and you're probably going to peak with them eventually. Whether that peak is gold 3 or that peak is immortal, eventually you're going to run into players that they don't work against and you're going to have to adapt. This doesn't mean remove those gimmicks from your playbook though, this just means to understand when they will work and when they won't work, and use them sparingly. Lots of players don't have this skill, but when you develop this skill, that's when you'll run into some of the best and most exciting players to watch. That sort of ties into our next tip though, which is to pay attention to pro play. When you watch pro play, it will be a lot more simple to understand what standard play looks like and how you can sort of copy what they do. Now, obviously pro play and matchmaking are super different, but you'll start to pick up on basic concepts of things that are good. You'll start to understand how pros play clutch situations, how they use their utility to grab territory, how they play around their teammates really well, People roast the casters and Valorant a lot, but some of them actually do a really excellent job of explaining what players are doing and why they're doing it. When casting, generally there is going to be a play-by-play -play caster and then a color caster. The color caster's job is to generally provide analysis during the game to give viewers a detailed understanding of why pros might do what they do, and then the play-by-play -play caster's job is to generally cover the more hype moments and break down the more intense visuals on the screen for the viewer. If you're looking to improve, try to listen to what the color caster is saying during the slower parts of the round to have a good understanding understanding of what is going on in the game. Many of these guys do a really good job of this. Moving on to number 16 though, and we say this a lot on the channel, if you haven't been recording your games yet, you really should. One of the easiest ways to pick out your mistakes in Valorant is to look back through them when you're not playing and think about what you could have done better. Luckily, we recently launched our own community Discord where you can submit your own VODs for us to review, so if you're looking to get your games looked at by us and potentially featured in a video, be sure to check that out, link in the description below. Moving on to tip number 17 though, and that's going to be to try to find players better than you to play with. Maybe you find these guys in your matches who just seem to be really strong players, or maybe you go out of your way to find a community to play with. Generally, if you put yourself out there, you'll be able to find players who are better than you, and that's how you're going to improve faster. Because at the end of the day, playing with people better than you is going to make things more challenging, and things that are more challenging always offer more for you to learn and grow from. What I highly suggest is that, like I said before, if you encounter good players in your matches, add them, and then try to play a few matches with them. You never know who you'll meet along the way. Something else to keep in mind with people in Valorant is tip number 18, which is toxic players will never say anything useful. And this is in reference, obviously, to players who don't want to mute players because they might make necessary callouts. Remember earlier how I said that you pretty much have all of the information you need on your map? I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some things that you can't get from your map, such as audio or your teammates' intentions, but you can still kind of read your teammates' intentions by just looking at how they're positioned, and you can also still see enemies on the map when they appear. So trust me when I say, somebody who is being an absolute jerk to you is never going to start being like, hey, I'm swinging this corner, can you trade me? Or I hear 4B, they're in spawn flanking you. This stuff just isn't going to happen. Trust me, I have thousands of hours in this game now. Rather than making helpful callouts, what they're going to do is bait you and then they'll get upset with you after you die after they bait you. It's not worth it. Just mute these guys and try your best to not only win the game, but enjoy the game. Because you shouldn't be letting some jerk on the internet ruin an experience for you that is supposed to be fun. Moving on to tip number 19 though, and that is you don't need to be a hero to climb. A lot of players have this really warped mentality that they need to hard carry every single game that they're in, but that's just not the truth. You have to play well, don't get me wrong, and I would say that you have to pull your weight, but if you want to climb, you need to do your job and a little bit more. That should be your goal every single game. Don't expect to hard carry, and there are going to be games where you might actually have to hard carry to win. But if you want to climb, matchmaking should do a good job of balancing teams, meaning that all you have to do is pull your weight and a little bit more. Like I said, this won't always be true, but most of the time it will, and this will prevent you from having the whole mentality where it's you versus the world, because it's really not. You have four other teammates on your team that are all the same rank as you, so stop trying to act like a hero and just try to do your job. 
you'll be surprised how much this helps. Moving on to our last thing that I wish I knew when I started playing Valorant though, and that's that if you wanted to see how some of the best players in the game carry effectively in any rank, that is all available to you at skillcap.com. For real, we just got a bunch of new Radiant level players who are helping us showcase exactly how you can get out of any rank in the game, and this is also backed by a rank improvement guarantee, meaning that if you don't see the improvement, it's literally no risk. This is by far the fastest way to improve at Valorant, so if you're looking to join the higher ranks and become the best player that you can be, be sure to check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. I really hope that you guys got some insight into some of what I believe is the most helpful tips for newer players, or even just players in the lower ranks. I tried to avoid agent-specific tips because I wanted to cover things that were relevant for all agents, so I hope I did a good job with this. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below and give us a like, and we'll catch you in the next one.